Hello and welcome back to Podcast with a K. I'm your host, Carla with a K. You're listening to WECS 90.1 FM and I am joined here on this fine Sunday evening by one of the first people I actually met on campus and uh, obviously who you just heard, brand new track, Sergio. Welcome to the studio. Yo, what's good, y'all? Whoever is listening, which I, I, I hope so because I told my friends so I was like, y'all better, <laughs> y'all yeah. better listen, y'all. They better listen. Um, if you are listening, uh, you're either on WECS FM, on a radio, online, and you have a video feed, cameras right there, uh, or you're watching on twitch.tv slash K-A-R-L-Y-G-I-I-R-L, which is the place to be if you want to be a part of the live conversation. If that's a lot of work for you, you can always hit us up on the Twitter for the show at P-O-D-K-A-S-T-X-K. Podcast by K on Twitter. So, hi, Sergio. Tell us about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Um, <laughs> Other than make bangers, obviously. So, uh, I mean, I'm a full-time student here. Um, really, I mean, I just really be going to classes and then trying to balance my time, trying to make some music and, you know... Trying to meet new people nowadays, because to be honest with you, I'm like, I've turned into a super introvert, and I'm trying to kind of get away from that again, like not be so secluded and isolated, yeah. As it goes, honestly, I feel like I went through a phase at the beginning where I uh, would kind of only really just stay in my room, talk to my roommate, talk to my sister, people that we met collectively. And then eventually gave into peer pressure, met more people, hung out with more people. Then the pandemic hit, and obviously that was awful. But quarantine reminded me how much I just enjoy being on my own, you know? Sometimes you just want to watch TV or play video games or listen to the same song 17 times on repeat without being interrupted. <laughs> oh, yeah. I felt that, trust me. <laughs> yeah, but now senior year, uh, I have, like, new friends, new roommates than, than I started with, as it happens. Um, and we've been, uh, our running joke has been, this is the YOLO year. Everything that we haven't done before, that's what we're doing this time. It's like, oh, well, I don't know, you know, trip with the senior class to the casino. Why would I do that? I was like, nope, YOLO year. So that's what I was doing, not yesterday, the day before yesterday. And then yesterday, uh, I was on the wait list to go to Broadway to see Hades Town. And I was like, ah, whatever, you know, I'll just stay home, work on my final project. I get the email like the night before. It's like, hi, we have a ticket available for you if you want. And I was like, I guess I'm going. I didn't know who was going. I didn't know who I was going to hang out with. But I was like, I'm going to go to Broadway. (laughs) YOLO. Honestly. That Sleeping With Siren song. Do it now. Remember it later. Exactly. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Which is a phenomenal segue into a future conversation we're going to have because there is such a revival in emo music. Oh, yeah, you bet there is. We'll but before before we talk about emo music, tell me more about your music because you have two songs out right now mm-hmm. um, on the radio station. I don't know. I think I told you before uh, during a radio club meeting, we were talking about music from people we knew and I put yours on air that day. Mm-hmm. And so ever since then, I've been trying to reach out and be like, hmm, I feel like this would be a good segment. But, you know, time yeah. continually, continuously escapes one. But yeah. now you're here and you can tell us about it. Facts. I mean, yeah. Uh, both songs actually were made here on campus. On campus. Yeah. Because um, I've been working on music way before I came to college. Uh, I mm-hmm. actually started working on music probably like the first time i picked up a guitar which was like in 2010 right um and i was still in high school i was like 16 sure. years old i think or 15 that's young and that's funny that you say like that yolo attitude because yeah. like that's how i started with me and my friend um he was like we don't know how to play instruments we don't know anything about music but you want to start a band <laughs> and i was like you know that sounds pretty fun just let's do it we love to see it See, and that's the best way to do things is simply to just get out there and do it. No questions asked. You just get after it. Exactly. And like, yeah. And then like after we did that, I think we kind of just like were messing around and we have no idea what we're doing. I think we were learning as we were like, as we were trying to quote unquote write, you know, songs because it was not songs. It was just nonsense, to be honest. But I mean, it was fun. But um, we yeah. love a good passion project. Yeah, it's just it was just uh, to have some fun and kind of uh, 
I think we were kind of the the quote unquote un, you know the not the popular kids on campus at all. So we were like, we, if we do this, we might get a little bit of a clout. Just a little bit, right? <laughs> and, uh, and we were like, you know what? It, it was ridiculous because, I mean, we didn't know what we were doing at all. It was it was right. a mess. But um, I mean, it worked. I've seen a lot of the uh, the people that we have mutually, like, on the internet. Anytime that you do anything in music, everyone's sharing it. So, you right. know, you got the clout. True. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But now. honestly, what even is popularity in college? You know, like... The people that you think are popular, you talk to them a couple times, and it's like, you're so one-dimensional. Your entire oh personality God. is wanting to be popular. Dude, no, I've literally thought that so many times. <laughs> I, like, felt so weird about stuff sometimes about, like, oh, maybe I should talk to more people because, you know, like, uh, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with, like, right. that that phase is over. Like, you don't have to feel lesser than anyone, but mm-hmm. then you talk to them, and then it's they kind of They like, still have that complex. It's kind of like, mm, I'm like bro you need you do not have any depth like <laughs> you need more depth like this is just, i'm like i see why right. like you honestly don't, you don't have to click yes. with everyone honestly. yeah no one's saying you have to be friends with everyone yeah. but i've kind of adopted a mentality re- in recent years um after high school you know i i talked about it a little bit last week on the show uh and then in my like, day-to-day conversations because that's how the show topics come up it's just i was talking to somebody and i thought it was cool so i was gonna put it on air but mentioned about how like i used to be very cynical very sarcastic very much like you know if if you're not vibing with me you're not vibing at all yeah now i try to be more of the mindset where it's like you can learn something from anyone even if all you learned is that that's not the person for you. Yo, yeah, facts. That is, that's a good mentality. Yeah. Like, seriously. I mean, yeah, that's how I, I honestly think the same, to be honest, because there are times when you're like, okay, like, I've had that too. I'm like, there's people that I'm like, well, you know, we don't really click. And then, you, you know, I'm like, yeah, some people don't have, like, the same interest and so you sometimes you automatically want to be like uh, you know mm-hmm. moving on but it's like no i think yeah there's like there's always something to take away so i i, I agree with that yeah um speaking of being inspired by people and things phenomenal segue once again as we do on the show mm-hmm. uh you have some songs for us that you've been inspired by that you're vibing with and so let's do a song break. We've heard a song by you. Mm. Now let's hear a song that got you to where you are. Yeah. Right? We're talking about our past, so I think it's fair that we listen to Feels Like We Only Go Backwards by Tame Impala. Oh, yeah. So why this song? Um, Actually, I've always loved Tame Impala, mm-hmm. but like... Not to be a hipster. Yeah, no. no <laughs> oh, no. Like, you know, they're not, you know, they're the underground, you know. Have you ever heard of them, by the way? Tame Impala, you know. I don't know. So, I feel so like they're a little, like, unknown, you know, yeah. kind of like uh, Rick Astley. I don't yeah. know if you've oh, heard of him. Yeah. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> uh, so, like, you know, so obscure. Yes. But Tame Impala. Yeah. Tame Impala, I mean, it's because of their sound, the way, like, they kind of just experiment a lot and then... You know, they have the psychedelic sound, which I always thought was pretty cool. Right. But I went to see them actually not too long ago when they came here in Uncasville. Yeah, no way. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure that was a show. Yeah. I mean, I've already, li- I w- I've always kind of listened to them. But then after the show, you know, you kind of dive back in more. Right. You, after oh, you hear it live, for sure. you're it like, changes oh, how you perceive yeah, it. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> you hear all the nuances of their music and you're like, oh, but this is music. Yep. And this song specifically, I'm like, I think I listened to it before, and mm-hmm. it used to be kind of like a anxiety slash like sad kind of song because right. I'm like, oh, like we, it feels like it's just a step forward, two steps back. But yeah. after I heard it now, it like gave me like a, it's, it's changing my mind to an uplifting vibe. So mm-hmm. now I hear it, and I like it gives me a little bit of serotonin, you know? So yeah, a little bit sure. of that. So let's get some serotonin in the studio, shall we? Here is Feels Like We Only Go Backwards, Tame Impala. That was Feels Like We Only Go Backwards by Tame Impala. So yeah, very underground, very obscure. No one has ever heard of them. And if you have, wow, props to you. You must be real deep in the Spotify suggestions. Say that again. <laughs> you mentioned that this is the type of song that gives you a little uh, serotonin boost. Um, you know, it, it definitely helps calm you down whenever you're in one of those moods where everything is making you anxious. Uh, I know you've mentioned before uh, your journey through mental health, etc. Mm-hmm. Wh- who doesn't have one? 
Um, but, you know, tell us, tell us about how, how this relates. Yeah. Um, it actually has helped me quite a bit recently because I've actually dealt with a lot of mental health struggles the last semesters that I've been here. It's progressively gotten more difficult. And so a lot of that stems, too, from, like, anxiety of the uncertainty, you know, of you don't know what's to come. You can't control anything. So it's kind of like, what if things don't work out, you know? And you can kind of be like, well, what if they do? Which I'm learning to kind of interrupt those thoughts. But um, right. right now, like, a lot of that really stems from, like, the fact that... I personally, I'm, I'm like open about that. I'm not really doing too well in school because um, I've tried to focus more on the music side. Right. And I actually was working recently, by the way, because I felt like I lost some of that. Um, I lost some of the energy I had with music because like it, when you do it on your own for sometimes it's cool but then yeah. it's like you kind of need you start more. doing it as a job and then it kind of takes on a different tone yeah, exactly and then like especially when you're on your own like you feel like you lose a little bit of like creativity so sometimes you need to work with other people which i recently found that i did with one of the people i met in a class this semester yeah. of all places really like of all places <laughs> the place i tried not to you know, the miss. place that I hate going to the most. And yet, there it is, <laughs> yeah. And in one of my music classes, uh, I actually met uh, uh, this homie named Sophia. Mm -hmm. And we started working on some, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it's, it gives me like dream pop vibes. Okay, Yeah, sure. I really like it. And um, that kind of like made me be like, oh, like, I haven't felt it, you know, was fun to make music in so long. So like... That actually has kept me going a bit because, yeah. yeah, like I said recently, it's it's felt like if I don't know what's going to happen and if it doesn't work out, like, then why even try sometimes, you sure. know, like why? But No, so, it makes yeah. sense. I, I feel that on not so much the music side, music has actually been the one thing that I've kept as a hobby for hobby's sake. You know, mm -hmm. um, one time uh, I've, I've mentioned Discord and Twitch uh at some point, there was a conversation about what was it that like the rest of the squad did that you admire, but that you don't understand because you would never do that. Mm. And someone was like, Carly, on the internet, I'm Carly, don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> Carly's always like going after hobbies, but then she finds a way to monetize it. Like, that's crazy. And I was like, I do be doing that because whenever I was out of school, I graduated, you know, 2015, mm. had a million years out of school because right. of life. But, uh, you know, we, we have similar stories in that sense as well. But um, I started selling art. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a painter. Then I was like, no, art is a hobby. You know, I want to do that for fun. Mm -hmm. Once it started being for a job, I had not painted something for myself in years. <sighs> and then here at college, uh, there was a like paint night thing. And one of the clubs, they were like, I know you paint. Um, would you be willing to teach it? And I was like, okay, what do you want me to paint? Oh, anything, you know, just, just have fun. And I was like, how? <laughs> I don't know how to do that anymore. And so it just takes like that one like thing where someone's like, hey, this is your craft. Go after it real quick, just for a second. Mm, and yeah. so when someone gives you a different perspective to approach it from, right? For the, I mean, for this, it was for somebody else, right? But what I painted was up to me. Mm. And so it was just that little like step that got me to kind of come back to it. And it's like, now it's like, okay, sure. Emote for Twitch. Why not? That's fun. <laughs> why not Photoshop? Uh, Daddy Yankee's face on the girl from Resident Evil. That seems Why fun. Not? Yeah, because yeah. Resident Evil, That's which I thought right was there. funny. But yes, so like, you know, you just have to find like that one thing that kind of reignites your interest in something. Yeah. And kind of like you mentioned about being able to shake the thoughts that drag you down into like those deep, like dark places that are so hard to escape from. You just kind of, as dumb as it sounds, you have to, like, make the choice to help yourself. Obviously, no, you know, true. that's not, a, like, an umbrella thing. Like, there are some things that you do need help with, even if the choice is getting help. Yeah, that's... Like, that's, that's significant. Yeah. It's it's about being proactive for yourself. Mm, yeah. Treat yourself the way you would treat your homies. You exactly. Know? Otherwise... Kind of like whenever you're being down on yourself, and it's like, well, I wouldn't say that about, like, the guy sitting beside me, right? So yeah, why am I saying that to me? Exactly. You got to think about yourself as a friend sometimes. Exactly. Too. You got to you gotta shake that voice in your head up a little bit and be like, hey, man, calm down. Yeah, that's what I've been doing, and it's it helps a lot. And it's you think it's working then, too? 
Yeah, that's because, like, I'm actually in therapy myself, and they've made me try to think from different perspectives in that aspect. And it's like, well, you made the choice to come here, so that's the first, you know, congrats. Yeah. Because you don't have to, you know, deal with this stuff on your own. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people turn away from therapy because they think it's, you know... Yeah. For people who like are, you know, quote unquote crazy or whatever. Yeah, they consider it more so as a last resort rather than the first step to getting better. Yeah, exactly. And like, no, you you only do yourself a service. Like, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get help. It's like, it shows that you want to get better. Yeah, you know? for sure. So that's really the main thing. And it's so interesting to me that people look down on things like this because it's like, yeah, if you're in that deep of a spot, like, I'm worried for you, but that doesn't mean I should look down on you. It's kind of like, if you know how to do your own hair, by all means, go crazy. But if you don't, please don't just take kitchen scissors and cut your hair. Go to someone that is a professional (laughs) in doing hair or in doing nails or in detailing your car and building your house. Just because you think you've got it, if you don't know what you're doing, it's better left off to somebody who put the time in to know what they were doing for somebody else, to help somebody else. Yeah, professional help is, it's different. You you can't do it all on your own. Exactly. And something as important as your brain, you're really going to look down on someone that said, hey man, I don't know the brain. Maybe I should talk to somebody that knows the brain. Exactly. (laughs) You know, yeah, you seem to know, you you know, you you have like 20 something years of experience maybe <laughs> just maybe you know more than I. yeah I it's don't like know. you went through clinical trials but i read a buzzfeed article so who's really the expert here Oof. yeah <laughs> oh my god oh no but seriously yeah that's a that's a good uh it's good to know when to get help and no i mean moments are so hard because moments are temporary mm-hmm. and like in mo but there are moments where you just feel kind of like I don't see how, and it, you know, it's cliche. People say it all the time, but it's like, yeah, you, in that moment, you're like, I just don't see how this could, you know, ever get better. Yeah. But I mean, one year from now, things could be very different yeah. than what you even expected. So you never know. That's the, that's the, like the other side of uncertainty. Right. It could, you know, it could also be really good and you don't sure. know that. So like maybe this is rock bottom and you'd never know it unless you got out of oh, it, you yeah. know? Like the only way out is through. <sighs> and that's that's such a hard concept to understand, especially when you're going through it. And it's like, well yeah, I'm through it, but like when does it end? Yeah. It's like, dog, just just hold on. You know, it's kinda like uh what is there's a there's a metaphor that I read in a book once where it's like If you're sifting for gold and you just keep coming up with dirt, how do you know that that last shake isn't what reveals the gold at the bottom? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I see. I think I saw something like that. I don't know why I was reading books about gold mining, but (laughs) there you have it. (laughs) Well, books about gold mining might save your mental health, man. This is true, because here I am talking about it like 10 years out of Mm. being in that class. (laughs) Some random stuff sticks with you. So This is true. It'd be like that. Exactly. (sighs) But yeah. I don't know. That's kind of how it's been this semester. It's mm-hmm. been the toughest one of them all. So it's a journey just getting through this. So music almost <laughs> almost kind of took a backseat for a minute. Yeah. But, you know, now that, you know, I feel the creativity coming back in, oh, no, right. it's, 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 it's a good feeling. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, if you were listening to the beginning of the show, you'll have heard, like, it's not like it's for nothing. Like this man is talented. Let's yeah, start that, there. That um yeah, but that that specific song is like, man, that it's so hard to write when you're down because you're just trying to get through it. But mm-hmm. sometimes like like that took a while to make, but it was like it came literally out of depression vibes like when I was really like in my room like for days, I didn't go to class sometimes. Like it just it just comes out sometimes and sometimes those are you know, those are the good ones. Exactly. And uh, you mentioned earlier about how uh, it's unfortunate when some people are just so shallow, one dimensional. You actually have a song lyric that I like, not in the one we played, but in mm-hmm. your first track, yeah. which you say uh, superficial vibes. They just uh, not my type. Oh, and I yeah. very uh. much enjoy that. This is a conversation that started with like, hey, man, you want to talk about your music on air? And now we're sitting here having like one of those deep, like late night combos that yeah. is sure to stick with somebody. Yeah, no, for real, dude. Like superficial vibes are like you Not know, man, time, because they're 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 like forced, <laughs> man, and you don't want to force anything. Yeah, and that's what I appreciate about like some of the people I've met recently too. Like, mm-hmm. 
a lot of like the stuff that we're doing is not been forced. It's been so organic yeah. and that's so refreshing because I've been in like situations where I feel like I've had to force things and I felt like it was being forced and this like it's it's really not it's not not my type of vibe. <laughs> That was uh, Romantic Rex by Death and Vogue, 1979. Really uh, good grunge vibes to segue us into the next topic, the revival of emo music. We've talked about music, we've talked about being emotional, and so now what brings it together? Emo music. Oh yeah, you See, already again, know. The segues are just impeccable tonight. But, um, yes, so uh, when you mentioned the topics that you wanted to talk about, you said, for no reason in particular, emo music. And I was like, well, that's kind of perfect because guess what's happening in Hartford at the Webster next Saturday, the 16th? Emo Night. Oh, yeah. Emo Night Brooklyn is coming to to Connecticut, finally. Uh, I'd gone to one of the, like, spin-off ones a couple years back, right. pre-pandemic. Pandemic hit, like, the weekend that there was supposed to be another one. Didn't get to go. So now, it's a couple years later. You said you've also gone to Emo Nights, right? Oh, yeah. I've gone to, like, quite a few. Okay. Yeah, like, the first one I went to was like 2016, so it has been a while. But yeah, that's I live for those. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like one of my favorite things to do as an activity. And the fact that I haven't done one in almost the same amount of time, like since then, is just wild. Insane, right? The things that have changed. But for those of y'all that don't know, emo night can either be a uh, DJ set or feature. You know, live artist in which. The music theme of the night is emo music, whether it's newer stuff. There's definitely always throwbacks. There's the songs that everyone knows. There's the songs that you only know if you listen to a very specific type of alternative. No. Uh, is that your scene? I, I don't know. Like, can I tell you my favorite yes. uh, emo track? And, well, emo band, I guess, Go that they it. play is actually Metro Station. Are you for real I right now? I love Metro Station <laughs> so much. Their first album, you know, it's... yeah. I listened to it in high school so much. Uh-huh. Like there was a time when like my friend um Antoine, yeah. We would like be in class and I'd be like it's one of those days, man. And he's like ah oh, cuz he already knows what I meant. I'm like I would have Kelsey by Metro Station on repeats right. for like the whole day because <laughs> I was so addicted to that song. Uh-huh. Like I would just he, he he got sick of it. Oh but no, like, for sure. I'm like, nah, dude. Like this is this is a banger right here. Like you don't even know. Like like. And then when I heard it at emo night in 2016, yeah. I was like, you know, I lost it, dude. I was like, right. yeah, it's it's been like it's it's full circle. Like I was waiting <laughs> for this moment forever, and you got to experience it. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, like this is amazing. Like right, I feel like I've waited forever. Exactly. So the track for me that did it was. Uh, we were talking during our little song break. I have had an interesting uh, relationship with emo music. When I was a kid, I was very much a music snob. It was If it wasn't pop, it wasn't what I was listening mm. to. I was listening to Justin Bieber and Justin Bieber only. You guys that have listened to the show for a while know this. It's not embarrassing, but it's also not great. Um, but on the low, I was like, you know, I really like Green Day. I really like Linkin Park. I really like Skillet. Oh, yeah, Park. What shifted for me, I'd seen Skillet in concert a couple of times, but it was that Winter Jam, which is Christian music concert. Oh, but wow. I went for Skillet for $10 and it was great. Love Skillet. I got to see them recently, as I talked about on the show. Um, and that was fine. That was dandy. Uh, during Emo Night here, the song that shifted everything for me was actually not by the, the three that I was so obsessed with in the past. Which one? It was a song I had heard in passing on someone's Twitch stream. I was like, whatever. It was uh, I'm Not Okay, My Chemical Romance. <laughs> of all songs for that, to like bring that energy oh to me, I was gosh. like, oh my God. This song brought like so much flooding back and it's like, dang. That song is just... It hits different. Oh my God, it, it does. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> I remember when, like, Trump got elected in 2016, Mm -hmm. and the first, like, thing I did, people were drunk. I was just like, the first thing I did was take another shot. (laughs) And the second thing I did was put, like, press shuffle Uh on, like, my music, and the first song that came up was I'm Not Okay. And I was like, yes, like, turn this one up. anthem for the moment, honestly. like, no, I'm not okay. Yeah. This this is not, I, I was just... (laughs) <laughs> I was like, uh, how did like the moment like fit that vibe? And right. then like, that's like right 
during the time where I was about to go to a second emo night. And, mm-hmm. like, I was like, yeah, of course. It's, like, it's this- times like that where you realize just how impactful music is in your life. <sighs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's for me, it's like everything like it's what got me through yeah like high school and different moments and you know that's why i remember that i wanted to make music Mm because people were like why and i'm like well if it helped me get through something you know maybe mine can help others get through like another kid in like high school being like yeah they just do this music (laughs) got me through you know years later like yeah it got me through so that's how that's why i do it and that's what like a lot of these emo bands did Mm -hmm. for me And I thought it was funny how I was talking to one of my uh, friends and I was like, you know, like in high school when we were like younger and like emo bands were our age that we are now. Mm -hmm. So now that we're their age, I'm like, yo, these songs kind of hit a little different now because (laughs) now I'm like, maybe I understand more of what they like are writing about in some of these songs because like now it's like the playlist I have on Spotify Mm -hmm. that I made for uh, with all the scene songs and stuff like it's called like. It's called scene, scene one, act two, because this oh, is like there you go because it's the revival, you know. Yeah, it's it is, back. and it really is, and it's super interesting to see that it's not isolated. Because my sister likes to clown on me because she said earlier today she actually said this. We were working on uh, a film shoot together, and we were actually talking about emo night. Uh-huh. Um, and she was like, I went through my emo phase in middle school like a normal person. Carla's just now going through it. And it's like, listen, it's not just me. You think I just stumbled upon emo music by myself again? No, it's because, you know, there were levels to it that got me there. Right. Another one of those songs that hearing at emo night that was just kind of like full circle was uh, Ocean Avenue. <gasps> yellow card? <laughs> yellow card. Oh, God. Uh, my heart. And you know how I found that song? I looked up the word yellow on Spotify because I was like, I want to hear songs about Yellow, and that's not Coldplay, because I know everyone knows Yellow by Coldplay. Yeah. I want other songs about Yellow. And I stumbled upon that one, and I was like, where was this song my whole life? It's like everything you could want and a little bit more. But yeah, anyway, so yeah. she was clowning on me for it, and it's like, it's not just me. And so I was watching Twitch once, and that's how I found out about Emo Night. I was watching Chris Melberger, who does, you know, video mm-hmm. games, whatever. He used to be a Viner. Um Oof. And he mentioned going to Emo Night Brooklyn because uh, he lives in the area. And I was like, well, what's Emo Night Brooklyn? And, you know, the rest is history. But I was like, OK, so it's not just me that's going through this right now. I don't know what's going on in the world, but we're all kind of just reverting to this music about being angry and being angsty, but also about celebrating the small things and the victories. Oh, yeah. You know, you already know that. <laughs> it's so <laughs> weird now. Like, for me, I thought, like, people kind of were like, I was a little sad when people like stopped listening to it yeah. and they were like kind of moving on to like you know some people I know had like music tastes that were you know we oh we grew up listening to like right. you know like uh, Escape the Fate and yeah. you know Falling in Reverse and mm-hmm. you know all these different bands and Sleeping with Sirens and Pierce the Veil you know there you go Charlotte shout and, out you know like <laughs> yeah so like <laughs> I remember my friend, um, the same one, Antoine, he was, mm-hmm. like, the one that put me on Pierce the Veil. Yeah. And I put him on Sleeping with Sirens. Uh, so we uh-huh. kind of were, like, putting each other onto stuff. And, like, you know, some of, like, we did take a break eventually from it. It yeah. kind of, you know, faded your, into... Your taste kind of growing yeah, like into other genres, whatever. whatever. And it's just, like, now... I'm like, why am I listening to these songs more and more uh, like, yeah. in the last two years, you know? Exactly. Like, I, like, I made a playlist for it. Mm-hmm. And now it's like a, a place I go back to now a little bit more yeah. frequently. I find myself listening to it. Yeah, it's it's cool to see like what that nostalgia does for you. And I feel like it's also got to have something to do, at least for us, because we're about to enter a new era of change. Oof. We're both graduating, yep. uh, which is insane. So like that definitely plays into it. But there's there's just something there. Like you mentioned during the Trump election, I feel like that was if you look up stats, there's got to be a spike mm. in there. With, with yeah, these types of songs. Are, oh. <laughs> because, you know, they're, they're the songs that are relatable because, you know, you can listen to upbeat songs, you can listen to sad country songs, but there's just something about, like, the rock scene that has always been so unapologetically, like, not necessarily anti-establishment, but just anti, like, control. You yeah, know, it's yeah, kind yeah. of about living your own life, and it's the sound itself is made to rebel. Yeah. And so even if you're not like, yeah, I hate my parents, and I hate the government, I hate school, <laughs> it's just kind of like I hate this concept that I'm expected to uh, to stick to yeah. of my life. Yeah. And even that's just enough, right? You just hear, like, that one angry guitar chord, and it's like, yes, so true, bestie. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> literally, like, it's the expectations, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm like to hell with expectations man like i'm trying to like 
do what I want now. Mm. And I feel that, you know, with the, I know a lot of y'all know what I'm talking about with that, the G note, you know, with, um, dun, yep, dun, that, when that G dun, note hits, dun. oh my God, like it's. <laughs> When I was yeah, a young it's, boy. and when I was at e- <laughs> one emo night with uh-huh. one of my friends, and like we were up on the stage, like, and I remember that song hit, and I was a little like, you know, I had a little drinks in me, right? And I remember this was one of the coolest things I experienced. It was like I was up there, yeah, and like so, like it was. I felt like that's where the artists stand usually, you know, right, in the yeah. venue. So like when that song dropped, like. I was like, oh my god! Like, hold on, everybody! Like, I was like, you know, like a like conducting everyone, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. and then like as the song started, I was kind of like, you know, you got to be that. Yeah, person Yeah, I was just moment. up there, like yeah. when I was a young boy, <laughs> and then crazy. like everybody was like, yeah. sit, like going along to like what I was doing <laughs> with my hands, and I was like, that is unreal. I was like, yes, I'm the king of emo right now. Oh like, hell yeah! Like. Yeah, we that, love that was scene. amazing. So I, that's why I love Emo Night. Yeah. And it's such a scene of community, too. Um, my sister was talking earlier about how she got to go to Warp Tour. I was going to go with her the year that it was over, but the friends Ooh. that, you know, we were trying to go with, you know, p- couldn't go. Yeah. Um, ended up not going, but she got that experience. And she was telling us about how, like, everyone was super nice. She went when she was still in high school, so she's, like, fairly young. And she's also really short. And she was just like, you know, excuse me, I can't see. And they just kind of like let her go to the front. She got to see Pierce the Veil oh, from the front. And that's really cool that she got that experience. And even now, you know, even we're all grown up. We're all adults. We're all, you know, our own people in the world. I have never been at such like a pleasant experience as at that emo night that I went to. Or at, uh, over the summer, I went to Hella Mega Tour. See Green Day, mm-hmm. Fall Out Boy, Weezer, The Interrupters. Oh Phenomenal show. Sheesh. Revived my love for Green Day to the up. max. Obsessed. Um, but same thing. Everyone was really nice. And I've been to other shows. I've been to pop. I've been to country. I've been to Winter Jam, which is a Christian show. Wow. The people at Winter Jam the most rude I've ever encountered. The people (laughs) at the rock shows, the nicest humans that I'll ever see. Everyone's super kind. Can you see? Are you okay? Was that your water? Hey, I think you dropped your wallet. Everyone was just, it's, you're just there for the music. And because everyone's just there with their feelings, it's, there's not really very much uh, resentment or anything. Especially emo. And like, yeah. it's like, cause everyone knows, like, you know, if you're there, you know, you've been through it. Like, and so yeah. it's like, you're just kind of there to support the homies. You have a moment. You had a moment <laughs> with this song too. Yeah, I know. Like, you yeah. know, it's just unspoken. You, Bonding you, you, you moment. You know exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. Warp Tour was such a time. I remember going in, uh, 2014. Mm-hmm. It was like the last time I went and it was so hot, you know, I was, you know, so ready to pass out, but right. like it was one of the most amazing things you can ever experience. Mm-hmm. And it's like wild because there's so many bands playing at the same time. So it's kind of like, you know, you got to pick and choose sometimes. Yeah. But regardless, it's so it's so amazing. I saw like so many bands that I was to in high school for the first time. Like yeah. I saw Sleeping With Sirens there. Insane. You know, I saw like... I wanted to see one of my favorite bands, Secrets, which I didn't get to see, but, you know, regardless. Like, You're in the same space. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're there. At least I know they're there, yeah. you know. But so many, so many good memories and good times. Like, you can't, you know. Right. It's, it's just its own thing. Yeah, I'll never get over emo music at all. Like, Yeah. It's it's. I think it's part of my, like aesthetic at, yeah, at this honestly. point. Yeah, like I can't get rid of it. People were like, are you going to move on? You know, like, oh, you oh, know. I'm, I'm supposed to? <laughs> There's like, you know, listen to, you know, these new artists, you know, yeah. be, everyone's going towards hip hop, which I, I'm glad it's getting its appreciation yeah, no, for because sure. like a lot of people kind of looked at it as a subpar genre sometimes. But that's also really interesting because there's such a huge parallel to what hip hop is viewed as now and what rock was viewed as before and the fact that they have roots in similar parts of the world, similar countries, similar people. And it's just like, you know, it's always the people who want to be different or the people who are born different that are the ones that are kind of cast aside. It's really cool to see hip hop kind of getting the pedestal it deserved because there is such amazing... uh, Com- composition and lyricism and you know the same as uh, what we were talking about with emo music if you relate to it there's nothing more powerful than yeah. that and usually the topics are a little deeper than you know I broke up with my boyfriend and I'm sad about it I'm gonna key his car you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah nah for real though but it's yeah that is a cool thing too and like yeah. they originated from you know uh I'm pretty sure, like, I read somewhere that they, like, rock and hip-hop were created by black people. So mm-hmm. it's, like, it's definitely, like, a, you know, 
comes from a feeling of alienation yeah. and like having to go against the grain a lot. Yeah. So like, I think that feeling will live on always in exactly. that, those genres. So it's really cool. Plus, not to mention that the aesthetic that comes with it visually and style and oh, fashion. Yeah. It's and coming things just, back. It's Have you coming seen that? back, and it's so cool. You know, oh you no longer just see, like, the same... For men and women, you no longer see the same, like, hoodie, skinny jeans, white shoes combo anymore. Yeah. You're starting to see more color. You're starting to see more design. You're starting to see... Graphic tees are making a comeback. I'm excited about that. That's I'm tired wild. of, like, the little pocket logo of, like, a cactus. Very <laughs> cute. But also, maybe I want something loud and obnoxious. I want green tie-dye with pink letters. Give me that. That is wild. <laughs> yeah. And it's so wild, though, with those, like... <laughs> with, the, like, that way of dressing now. Yeah. Where, like... You know, I see a lot of Instagram, like, people, like, ha with, with, like, huge amounts of followers, like, you know, with the emo and the scene aesthetic, yeah. and they were like, oh, bringing it back, and I'm like, that, that that's wild, because for us, like, mm -hmm. like, that we're in high school, like, at middle school. You were the weird that, kid. Yeah, we were like, well, our, like, aesthetic was actually just black skinny jeans, <laughs> black hoodie, black t-shirt, yeah. and the slip-on vans. Don't forget and, the, the bangs. Yeah, and the and the bangs. <laughs> and you know that's it. That yeah. that's the that's the aesthetic. I'm like I wish we could have addressed like that back yeah. then. Yeah. And it's like if you're feeling a little edgy, you throw on like that pink spiky bracelet, you're doing great. Oh my god. Not had a pink the bracelets, bracelet. The bracelets. <laughs> uh, wrist full of Yeah, the wrist full of just like all these bracelets. Oh. Yeah, it's good times, honestly. But it's cool now, and even with like hairstyles, like you see dyed hair a lot. Like I remember when oh, I first no. dyed my hair outside of high school because my parents didn't let me dye my hair. Uh, when I graduated high school, you know, I turned eighteen, and I was like, so like, I want to dye my hair, and they were like, yeah, do what you want, you know, whatever. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, one streak oh. color, and it just kind of grew and grew and grew and grew. For me, it was just kind of like I want to experiment with color. This is fun. But I also started seeing that reflected in like everywhere else you'd see more people with just like bright rainbow everything right. and like you're starting to see the bangs come back you're starting to see so much of like just style and it's a gateway into the music scene it is it really which is, is really cool because people are awesome. like oh you look like you know what's uh, you look like Haley williams from paramore it's like who's paramore do i have songs for you oh yeah and, you, you know you set them off on that entire track now he's like welcome <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> my brother in Christ. Welcome. <laughs> exactly. Oh, God. You will be my brother in Christ if you're not. After this, you will be. there's no way that we have not become one. Oh, my God. That is a... Uh, you love to see it, honestly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's cool, too, that it's like a lot of genres are now including emo uh, influences. Yeah. So, like, I think that's pretty awesome. There's there's always been, like, little crossovers. Like, uh, Haley Williams, for example, yeah. had a song with B.O.B. Yeah. Whenever, uh, do y'all remember Airplanes? That was Yo, cool. And they got Eminem on the track dude. also. <laughs> One of the, like, bangers of that time. But, like, people were just like, oh, yeah, she's got a good voice, whatever. It's like, she's she's got her own band. You guys know this, right? And so it's like, there were always in little crossovers like that. Or, like, having... Uh, What's her name? Kesha do a song with 303. Or people oh don't remember God, that Katy Perry dude. got her start at Warped Such Tour. Like, you know, little things like that where it's like there's always been influences. But now it's kind of just more, ah, eh, you know, everyone's doing songs with everyone else. Very cool. Very exciting. It's like, yes, but now you know what you do. You go to that featured artist and you listen to their discography. Yeah, yeah that's, that's wild. And, you know, one of the one of the biggest, like... Like, can, like, I don't even know to call it. Like, it's just like a fusion, I guess. Yeah. Like, that, like, really put it out there was Post Malone. Like, yeah. Like, while, like, I did not know this band, Crown the Empire, that I listened yes. to. Like, he apparently he tried out for Crown the Empire as a guitarist. No way. And, like, he got rejected. Uh huh. So then he ended up making. Sets him up on his hip hop. Yeah, career. like, Post Malone. He's yeah. Post Malone now. And, like, I remember seeing, like, tweets back and forth sometimes of, like, him and, like, Kellen Quinn from Sleep yeah. Sirens being like, yo, we should make a song together. Uh -huh. And I'm like, ah, you know, I need to know when I need this. I <laughs> as need soon to... as this drops, you know, yeah, notifications because, on. Because like I'm like, for you people that listen to Post Malone, I'm like, y'all about to hear my boy Kellen on, yeah, you know, with the exactly. vocals come through. So cool. It's always really dope to see that happen where someone just gets kind of boosted. <sighs> That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, my boy Kellen, man. He does beatboxing too, so like I, <laughs> I know his beatboxing doing skills. That'd be sick to a hear that. A little bit of everything. 
Yeah, it's just cool to see it though. So I'm excited for Emo Night. Yeah, same. Big that. same. And I'm excited to go to actual Emo Night Brooklyn because, like I mentioned, like there's been a lot of spin-offs, but that was the original one. And that's yeah, the one where they have the tendency to bring out like people who used to be in the Emo bands. So I'm like, fingers crossed that we're close enough to Brooklyn that this is where they bring out, you know, surprise yep. guest, you know, Ryan from Yellow Card. It's like, please, thank oh, you. Oh my I'd God, love you know, that. I would love to see, uh, you know, it probably won't happen, but right. you know, people I would love to see is like Kurt Travis from like uh, Dance yeah. Gavin Dance or something. Oh, like, that would be amazing. Yeah. So let's, let's manifest this energy that we're the state that gets the surprise guest. Oh, Otherwise, it'll still be a phenomenal experience, and that just means we have to go to more shows. Oh yeah, that, I mean that's my th- <laughs> that's always my thing, anyways. Like I'm always there. Yeah, dude. Once you get hooked on the concert scene, that becomes your thing. It's like, oh, you guys are going out this weekend. I- I'll pass this one. I'm, I'm saving up. I'm trying to go to see a show like three months from now, mm. but you know, I-, I need that money. <laughs> you already know, man. It's a uh, yeah. Shows are they get me through stuff too. Like yeah. it, it gives you that like boost you need. You're like exactly. Those that like those two hours of watching someone that you've like idolized for so long exist in front yeah. of you. It's like that's cool right there. You know, you're a real person. I feel like I can relate better now. Yeah, it, it feel it feels surreal sometimes. I'm yeah. like, yeah, like I used to listen to you in high school, man. Like mm-hmm. you got me through some stuff, and now here we are, <laughs> feet from each other, man. Like exactly. This is what awesome. is this? Yeah. <laughs> Celebrities are just like us. Exactly, <laughs> and you know, as an artist, yes, it feels cool, like you know to have that experience so mm-hmm. maybe it's like you would want that the other way around too yeah. you know that'd be awesome some someday it's always so. really cool to see especially cuz uh like you said you're you're on a you're on a similar wavelength here cuz yeah. that's what you're trying to do and i feel like kind of on a different end you know being on this side of the board i get to talk to promoters every now and then i'll get to talk to a band here a band there um last time that i saw skillet was you know a couple of homies that were working i talked about this last week on the show but I actually got to, like, meet the singer. You know, I shook his hand, took a picture. It was a great experience. But it's cool once you've been kind of, like, on this side of things where it's, like, you know, you're in the industry that I'm trying to break into. Yeah. And it's super cool to see that you've made it this far because, you know, in the future, someone's got to take up that reign. And so why not you, you know? Exactly. And, man, like, let me tell you, that would be so amazing to, like, be able to do something like that in the future, especially, like... I actually haven't heard, and I could be wrong, you know, but I really haven't heard of any, like, undocumented, like, that's another layer. Yeah. Of, like, (laughs) artists. Pepper that in as we end the show. Exactly. Like, of artists that, like, have, have, you know, this platform. So, like, it's always a thing of, like, if you get your foot in there. Yeah. You can hold the door open for others. You are carving that path for somebody else. Because, like. Hell Yeah. You don't. If you don't have that, then like yeah. you, you want to be that. Then let's, exactly. Let's, let's, let's like and do especially it. with the, like you said, the the added layer, the added hardships and difficulties and roadblocks that are in the way if you're undocumented, right? Because mm-hmm. it's one thing to be like, oh, you know, for the past five years, the director of the year at the Oscars has been Mexican. Really cool. But you add that detail, and you could yeah. be that for somebody else. That'd be crazy. You know, that'd be wild. Because mm-hmm. right now, like, think of like notable people in the media the only person that i know that's undocumented is david dobrik who is far from you know your ideal right, right, right. uh role model not that he needs to be but you know yeah, that's the only yeah. voice out there yeah, right yeah, now yeah, exactly it's, it's time it's time to add some more options you need more you always for the need kids more. <laughs> yeah of different kinds not just yeah. like not just dudes you know like mm-hmm. we need more women we know yeah so we need a little bit more of everybody you know yeah, exactly oh man Yes, but as our time draws to a close, you have one more song for us. Would you like to introduce it? Title is in Spanish, so I think this is a perfect segue into it. Yes, it um, it's one of the songs my friend Anna. Shout out to Anna. She be putting me on a lot of songs. She put me on this, and I've actually been getting into a lot more seventies and eighties songs, like in the last two years. And you know, kind of, I think disco has become one of my favorite genres now too. Amazing. So, Such variety in your yeah. musical repertoire. So this is like an 80s type of song sure. by a Mexican band, and I thought it was pretty awesome. Awesome. So we'll listen to that in a second. Before we go, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for sharing your songs, word, your word. life story, your love for music with us. Yeah, Hopefully, anytime. we'll continue to hear from you. Uh, we'll see your name in light, see you at the Grammys next year probably. <laughs> yeah, right? You already know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you already know. Awesome. I'm, I just, 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. Shout out all, you know, shout out my boy Quazy watching, you know, shout out Sophia, shout out my boy Antoine, even though he might be asleep, shout out my sister who is doing homework probably, and <laughs> yeah, like, th- thank y'all for listening. Of course, and if you miss the show, at some point I'll upload it. I have to graduate first before I have time to edit and re-upload, but you know, all of these episodes will be available at some point, so whoever missed it, you can be like, hey, this is me back before I was famous, and now look at me, I have five Grammys. <laughs> that'd be lit, you know? <laughs> But yeah, um, thank you so much for doing the show. Here is Si No Vas a Ser Tu by Young Tender. Have a good night. We'll be back next week at the same time, same station, new nonsense, and new guest. You're listening to WECS 90.1 FM. You've been listening to Sergio and myself, Carla with a K, signing off. Y'all better subscribe to her Twitch, man. (laughs) Please and thank you.